Hi folks, it's Max from uh, HighOnAndroid.com where we get high on Android every day. Anyway, today I'm going to show you how to get Google Wallet uh, working on any rooted uh, Android device running uh, AOKP ROM, CM10, anything that's kind of uh, um, non-TouchWiz ROM. Um, you can install this on a device that usually doesn't support Google Wallet, such as my AT&T Galaxy Note 2 here. Uh, which has my Google Wallet working fine. If you get this here, uh, it means it's working. Let me enter my password here. And you'll see that I've got my Visa card working. Uh, Google Wallet is great when you're traveling especially. You don't have to carry all your uh, you know, credit cards or maybe you forgot your credit cards and you're traveling to Thailand like I did. Uh, but you bought your phone and you can enable Google Wallet and use it as a credit card. Uh, on you know where they have NFC enabled and even in Thailand there's a bunch of places that support uh, NFC most grocery stro stores in Thailand support uh, NFC um, so this is a great way uh, if you have a non you know Nexus device to install Google Wallet and use you know use it as a, use your phone as a credit card anyway um, to do this you'll need a rooted device obviously and you'll be have to be running an AOSP ROM that's uh, like an AOKP CM10.1 or uh, you know just uh, standard Android 4.2.1 or whatever you just have to be running those ROMs you can't be running a TouchWiz based ROM uh, and it can work on you, know, you will obviously need NFC um, so I've got my AT&T Galaxy S3 as an example here and here I've got uh, let me see here I've got Android, I forget what I was running, Android 4.2.2 running here. Uh, this is the Liquid Smooth ROM I just installed uh, last night. And uh, if you're outside the US, you'll first have to hack your phone so you can ins uh, you can access the US Play Store. Um, if you don't know how to do this, I have a full t video tutorial uh, and also step-by-step st step step guide at highonandroid.com. I'll have the links in the description, check that out and uh, be able to access US Play Store before you do this and then come back to here. For those of you in the US, you can skip all of that steps. All right. So first thing we're going to have to do and I'm going to explain all the things, you know, all the things that's happening here. First thing we're going to have to do is we're going to have to make the Play Store think that we are in the US uh, and also that we are using a phone that supports uh, Google Wallet. Obviously this one when I search um, Google Wallet here it's not gonna show up it's gonna be some random stuff now before we start editing the editing the billprop.editor let me show you how to back it up uh, back up the file and restore it so go ahead and go to the Play Store uh, and download ES File Explorer alright or you can use your uh, favorite file explorer but you need to have root enabled and I recommend this one. This one you can enable root and uh, uh, basically, basically open it. All right, and then go to menu. Whoop, go to menu settings, and go to uh, root settings, and uh, make sure root explorer is checked on. Say yes. Hit grant, and also make sure up to root is enabled, and also mount file system is on. Hit the back button twice and then go to favorites go to slash and go to system where the build prop file is and go find build.prop go ahead and click uh, long press copy and you can copy it to uh, your SD card I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go to my oops go to my home here uh, which is my SD card I'm gonna go ahead and go to operations paste alright and this will paste my dot build dot prop. And also, I recommend before you edit the build dot prop, make a backup ROM. Sometimes, if you edit the wrong values, it can happen. Uh, it can software brick your phone. And if you make a backup ROM, you can always restore it very easily. So do make a backup ROM and make a backup of your build build dot prop just in case you want to go back. Uh, but uh, you can just stay on Galaxy Nexus uh, device when you change it. Um, you don't really need to go back unless you're trying to download certain apps that actually you know detect your phone device such as uh, ROM manager if you change it to Galaxy Nexus it's going to try to install Galaxy Nexus uh, clock mode recovery um, so you know go ahead and make a backup and if you want to restore it simply go to your SD card uh, go to your backup do copy and go back to uh, slash system 
and simply paste and reboot and that will restore your build out props. So I'm going to go to operations, paste. This will just overwrite whatever I had on there so it won't affect anything. Uh, but that's how you restore it. And uh, you know, let's go to the next step. So that's how you back up and restore your build out prop. Um, so go ahead and download uh, build prop editor. Just type build prop and you'll see a bunch of build prop editors. I recommend the first one, build prop editor by J Rummy Apps. Go ahead and install this. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna basically change the uh, three values in there. Um, so, you know, the Play Store thinks we are using a Galaxy Nexus. Very simple to make sure you hit grant. All right. Next, go ahead and find ro.product. All right, ro.product.device uh, D2ATT. Uh, that means I have a Galaxy S3 at and I'm going to go ahead and change that to uh, Maguro, which is the device ID uh, for Galaxy Nexus. Exactly like that, all in lowercase. Say save. And we're going to change uh, two more values, so don't reboot now if it asks you. And go down to uh, ro.product.model. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change this to Galaxy Nexus with the capitals like that exactly like this Galaxy Nexus all right and we're going to change uh one more value uh the product.name and d2uc we're going to type yakju which is the product.name for uh Galaxy Nexus all right go ahead and hit save and go ahead and reboot when it asks you and uh, once that's done, uh, you should now be able to um, fool the Play Store into thinking you have a Galaxy Nexus. Now there's one more step. You have to fool the Play Store into thinking that you are using a carrier uh, that supports uh, Google Wallet. And now I have an AT&T obviously here. Google Play Store is going to see that and say, you know what, you're using an AT&T phone. I'm not going to give you Google Wallet. So we're going to go ahead and change that and there's an app called Market Access. You can download this um, on XCA. So I'll download it here with you guys and go ahead and type uh, uh, Market Access, Access XCA exactly like that and you'll find this link for mod uh, market.access.apk. Um, I'll have a link to this and also step-by-step -step guide. You can follow that on my website uh, so you don't have to actually search for this but I'm just showing you in case you know you want to do it on the go. So I'm gonna go ahead and download marketaccess.apk very small file. Go ahead and open. Go ahead and install it. Go ahead and open it. Alright. And also you can back up uh, your current SIM numeric value so go ahead and hit backup. If you ever need to restore it, you can hit here if you have any problems. And next, we're going to go ahead and uh, go to providers. Now, there's no sprint in here. I know the sprint value. So go to custom and type 310120. This is the same numeric value of uh, sprint set to this value. And Play Store is going to think that um, you are using a sprint Galaxy Nexus, which supports Google Wallet. Um, so next what we're going to do, if you're outside the U.S., make sure you uh, enable your VPN or SSH tunnel. Uh, since I'm outside the U.S. in Thailand right now, I'm going to enable that. For those of you in the U.S., you can skip that step. All right, now there's one more thing we're going to do. We're going to have to clear the, the uh, data on the Play Store so it will recheck our IP, um, our you know SIM numerical number, and also uh, the other stuff. All right, so let me go ahead and go to uh, applications, apps, settings, apps. All right, and click on Google Play Services and hit clear data. All right, and force stop. All right, and open up uh, Google Play Store. And now you should be able to get a pop up. Uh, it recognizes it, hit accept. It rec it's recognizing your phone as a Sprint Galaxy Nexus. Uh, and go ahead and search for wallet.
and boom shakalaka, right? Once you sign into Google Wallet, if you are using VPN or SSH tunnel, you can switch it off. If you're in the US, obviously you don't need to do that. You can just download. So I'm going to go ahead and download Google Wallet. All right. And boom shakalaka. We got Google Wallet working. Uh, and download it installed on our AT&T Galaxy S3 here in Thailand. Um, so this is a great way. Go ahead and open it and uh, you should be able to do this. Now you can try doing this on a TouchWiz based ROM but because of some of the libraries um, it will require an additional hack and uh, it is possible but I'm not going to get into it for the purpose of this tutorial. I do recommend just installing a CM10.1 AOKP ROM um, you know to get this wallet working and that's one of the advantages of running an AOSP Cyanogen mod AOKP all those you know ROMs because it's set up as a Google device already um, so all you have to do is change the get prop values and also the carrier if you're in the US and if you're outside the US you just need to also fool it into thinking that you are in the US setting up the wallet alright um, for setting up the wallet you don't actually have to uh, fool it into thinking that you're in the US uh, just for downloading it to your device um, you just need to do it anyway this should work if you get to this point uh, congratulations now you should be able to use uh, your phone as a credit card all over the world wherever you're at and uh, yeah this will work and I'll be back when this is done because it's gonna take probably a couple more minutes and there we go. I've got uh, my Google Wallet working. It's asking for it. I finally got the sign up screen. I'm going to go ahead and enter my password. And boom. I've got it working here. And I'm going to enter my zip code in the US. And it's still setting up. And uh, once you get to this screen, it's good as uh, good as gold and uh, I've actually got my one of my other accounts signed up here and I uh, got my main account working on my other Galaxy Note 2 here uh, but there you go you should be able to now get Google Wallet working and I'll be back when this completely sets up alright we're done here um, I don't have a credit card set up on my this account on my left here but I do have it set up on my other one here and I just gotta be able to set it up so there you have it now you should be able to use um, your your uh, rooted Android device on any rooted Android device uh, with an AOSP ROM um, and run wallet anyway if you like this video as always uh, don't forget to sign up for my email list oh sorry don't forget to don't forget to uh, don't forget to hit that like button here subscribe button down there and uh, share this with your friends on Twitter, Facebook, or Google+. And also, um, there is an easier way to do it on the Galaxy S3, but I made this guide because um, I wanted to let everybody do it, whether you have a 1X, um, you know, uh, you have a Nexus, uh, the Optimus G. Um, I wanted to be able to for you guys to be able to install Google Wallet regardless of the device you have but for the Galaxy S3 there's an easier way uh, there's a thing called Galaxy S3 Wallet Installer I've never tried it uh, but this method works on all root Android devices so go ahead and try it out and do let me know uh, if you get Google Wallet working and let me know what kind of phone you're using and what country you're at and I'll see you guys later have fun with Google Wallet and I'm gonna go ahead and start you know Go use my Google Wallet here in Thailand. Anyway, see you guys later. Um, yeah, that's it. All right. Peace out.